afternoon, everybody. I'm going to talk a bit about, start off talking about the crisis. And I'm going to say that the electricity crisis in South Africa is a managerial crisis. I don't think demand for electricity has ever really exceeded installed capacity. The amount theoretically available if all sources are functioning properly. Therefore, the crisis arises from how our electricity resources have been managed. The issues are around encouraging lower demand, not higher, and this is in conflict with a utility like ESCOM and with municipalities that want to sell more electricity, not less. Managerial failures have also been manifested around a decent timetable for maintenance. They have not been able to stop demand eating into the safety margin. Our solution is to bring new electricity sources on grid as fast as possible. And this points to the fact that we should therefore be more rely reliant on renewables. Because unquestioningly, renewables are the fastest way to install new capacity. We are seeing huge cost and time overruns on the contract to build Medupi, and the same pattern will apply to the nuclear installations. The industry claims that it takes about 10 years to build a nuclear power station, but with overruns, it could be considerably longer. So why do South Africans embrace more coal, more nuclear, and wanting to exploit new fossil fuel resources like shale gas? Part of the answer to this, and people have pointed to it, is what the late Jamaican sociologist Stuart Hall termed a moral panic. This is a kind of panic engendered and manufactured by the media or a particular interest group, usually wanting to push forward an unscientific or an irrational position. Our moral panic is around how we can combat what is euphemistically called load shedding, and we're all buying into the language. We should be calling it what it is, which is power outages. And to return us to a 24-hour electricity provision. ESCOM government and media do not interrogate the means for delivering more energy. Whichever source they will deliver, they argue, bring it on. The people are so panicked that they mostly go along with this. As I've said, the most rapid form of de developing new generation is the multiplication of renewable energy solutions. So why is the public not pushing for this? Well, depending on our definition of public, we need to say that those sections of the public concerned with energy and ecological justice have certainly been advocating renewable solutions very strongly. For example, we have seen the, ad the active advocacy by NUMSA, the Metal Workers Union, the biggest trade union in the country, of renewable energy. They question the state's model of introduction of renewables by giving contracts to the most experienced global players rather than keeping production local and socially owned. But sadly, most of civil society are not yet on the same page as NUMSA. Recently, the ANC and Allied Forces in Soweto staged a march to the ESCOM office in Diptkloof, demanding an end to electricity outages and calling for free electricity for Soweto residents. In this instance, the means of delivery, the sources of electricity were not questioned. Early experiments in mass provision of renewables had patchy results because some township residents with solar panels felt that only a few of their domestic appliances could be provisioned. They queried why they were being subjected to a technology that did not provision all of their needs, unlike what was being delivered to more affluent consumers. Price was much more of an issue in years gone by, but as we've heard more recently, wind power has come to be cheaper than that of coal, and the curve for solar costs is descending very rapidly. Therefore, in the context of rapidly escalating electricity prices, surely it makes more sense to adopt more renewables. The dividend in terms of climate change is also crucial. Clearly, renewables trump coal and nuclear in this regard, as people have, have shown. The nuclear industry is still in denial that their technology, 
supports harmful climate change. They argue that nuclear reactors produce no CO2. And of course, this is correct. But what we argue is that if you measure the emissions from cradle to grave, the picture gets murkier. There are huge emissions in processes like mining, milling, transport, uh, conversion and enrichment of uranium, and the fuel that goes into the uranium, the fuel that goes into the reactors. Similarly, there are major carbon emissions further down the chain with re reprocessing of spent fuel and decommissioning of the reactors, which is like treating them like nuclear waste when, they, when their life is over. With renewables, on the other hand, there's almost always a climate benefit. In writing about the rate in South Africa of uptake of renewables, which, more, uh, which is uh, accelerating more recently, I call the attitude of government and ESCOM a reluctant embrace. We chose not to go the road of early adoption of these technologies, and as a result, we've lost out a lot in terms of domesticating production, training, and bringing down local costs. Why this reluctance? Because renewables raise the possibilities of decentralized energy, of spreading power in both senses out of centralized control, in using the technology to empower many more people on the ground, and of, of offsetting high bills for cons uh, by consumers returning unused power to the grid. So these, these are why renewables are not being embraced. And of course, there was resistance to this by ESCOM and government. Now that ESCOM has more or less imploded, perhaps we as a society can begin to think of a more creative and more broadly empowering solutions in this area. The crisis should also allow us, as Tasnim was saying, to, to the space to make new arguments and new plans. I firmly believe in, in the important role of civil society in shaping and effecting just solutions. Can we step up to the challenge, inform the uninformed of the arguments, empower communities and the state to bring about creative solutions? We need to create a whole number of ways in which we demonstrate to the public how uh, the benefits of, of renewable resources. And for example, uh, WWF um, earlier this year with AIDC in Cape Town organized a, a demonstration of, how, of the benefits of renewable energy. And there are other things that we can use like science fairs, like school uh, curriculums, like pub for public demonstrations of renewables and show model townships or other areas where renewables have, have already begun to work to people's benefit. We need to demonstrate that this can be done at scale and at cost, time, and ecological benefits much more competitively than with other energy sources. We need to do this as part of our commitment to the eradication of inequality in our own society and also as part of our global human responsibilities. It's a challenge that we have to embrace. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And um, thank you for raising the media, however briefly, but I think they're an important stakeholder that we need to talk about as mm. well.